People steal ideas. Companies steal and copy inventions. That's a fact. And in my 34 years of practicing patent law, I have seen several cases where this has happened. So you have every reason to be worried someone might steal your idea. So how do you stop that from happening? There are several things you can do to protect your idea. And some of those things are easy and free to do. Today, I'm going to explain what those things are and what you need to do. Like I said, some of those things are free and easy to do. So keep watching. Now let's get started. Who will take your idea? Almost anyone who knows details about your invention could copy your ideas. But realistically, there are some people who are much more likely to do so than others. A business partner, an investor, or an employee is probably the most likely type of person to steal your invention. They will have access to detailed information about your invention, and they'll have plenty of opportunities to pass on those details to someone else to start up a rival enterprise. Potential buyers or licensees of your invention are also likely candidates. Therefore, these are the first group of people you should try to protect yourself against. Now let's explore how you protect yourself. Keep a journal. The first and perhaps easiest thing you can do to protect yourself is to keep a journal. Get yourself a cheap paper journal with blank pages. On the first page, write in your name and date in ink. Then each time you think of an improvement or the next time you do anything in relationship to your idea, jot down details into that journal. Number and date the pages as you go along. Every time you meet someone about your invention, put in the time and date of the meeting, who you met with, and details about what you talked about. When you run out of space in your journal, just simply get another one. Keep your journals in a safe place where you can have access to them as you need them. These journals will be a valuable bit of evidence in the event there's a dispute as to the ownership of the invention or the ownership of the idea. Seriously, it's amazing how useful those journals can be in resolving disputes and straightening out misunderstandings. I had one case years ago where such a journal would have avoided a multi-million dollar legal dispute involving the ownership of an invention. Trust me, keep a journal. Hide details. The next thing you can do is actually really easy. Simply hide details of your invention, particularly mission critical details. Oftentimes, an invention will have a lot of details which are necessary to make your invention or your idea work. Those critical details are potentially very valuable and should be protected. However, oftentimes you can describe what your idea is in broad general terms without having to reveal any of those critical details. So in those cases, you can explain your invention to someone without divulging all of those details that you need to protect so that you can gauge whether or not that person has any real interest to be involved with your project. If they prove to you that they have uh, an eagerness to join your project, then at that point you can take additional steps to protect yourself. But until that time, all those details should be kept secret. NDA. So what can you do to protect mission critical details that you have to reveal to someone? Well, pay careful attention to this part because this is probably the most important aspect of how to protect your idea without having to file a patent application. Basically, you need everyone to sign a non-disclosure agreement or NDA. Now, before you get intimidated about getting contracts signed, I'll explain in a little while how you can create an effective NDA without that person even knowing that you're doing it. Yes, certainly, a signed NDA is the best way to protect yourself initially. And I have a video and a free online course on that exact subject, which I'll link to in the description below. Now, the key part to any NDA agreement is that you have them signed before you reveal the critical details. 
you also have to make sure that the person agreeing in the NDA is the party receiving that information. Check the links below for further details. Effective Confidentiality Agreement Now, not everyone is comfortable signing a legally binding agreement. What do you do when that person or company won't sign an NDA? Do you just walk away? Well, I'm about to reveal to you a way you can create a legally binding confidentiality agreement without anyone having to sign anything. Okay, this is how you do it. Let's say you want to create a confidentiality agreement or NDA between you and Mr. X. Mr. X needs details about your invention, but he's not willing to sign an NDA agreement. He insists that he'll keep the details of the invention secret and that he won't steal your invention. Unfortunately, you can't just walk away because you really need Mr. X to cooperate, so you have no choice but to trust him. This is not an optimal situation, but if you're desperate to send him the details of the invention, but he refuses to sign an agreement, this is what you can do to help protect yourself. You send Mr. X an email, and in that email you tell him that you're willing to give him the details, but only on the strict condition that he, one, agrees that the information you're going to tell him is secret, two, that the information belongs to you, three, that he undertakes and promises to keep that information secret and to not tell anyone else, and four, that he won't use or commercialize that information without your specific written permission. In that email, you tell him specifically, and I quote, do you accept those terms for me to release that information to you? End quote. You then wait for him to send a replying email. If his reply says basically, yes, I accept your terms, or something very similar to that, then you have what is essentially a confidential agreement or NDA. It has to be really clear in that email that he sends you that he is accepting your terms. It's much better than a verbal agreement because it's all written down in emails and if the need arises, you can use those emails to prove that there was a binding agreement to keep that information secret. Okay, now it's not as strong as a written NDA, which is signed by both parties, but it is an enforceable agreement in many legal jurisdictions and it is much better than having nothing at all. Of course, you don't actually reveal the details until after Mr. X agrees to your terms in writing, and I have to stress that. Right after that meeting, you send an email confirming that you met and discussed confidential information about your invention or your idea, and that he promised to keep that information secret. This email exchange method is useful but you should first try to get the party to sign a written NDA agreement. If you'd like copies of blank NDA agreements and learn how to use them, I have a free course on NDA agreements, which I'll link to in the description below. Provisional application. The best method to protect your idea is to file a provisional patent application before you tell anyone. I know what you're thinking. Patents are expensive. Well, they certainly can be, but a provisional application can be filed for less than $100, especially if you do it yourself. It's a bit complicated, but if your invention seems promising and you have people working and investing with you to build your project, then you really should consider filing a provisional application early on in the process. I linked to a video in the description about how a provisional application works. Furthermore, I'm coming out with an online course on how you can write and file your own provisional application. So check back soon. But wait, there's still more things you can do to protect yourself. Application after disclosure. Let's say you reveal details of your invention to a potential licensor or investor, then later decide you can't trust those people. What do you do then? You could send them an email confirming that there's an NDA agreement in place, assuming they signed an NDA. 
or you could be preemptively filing a provisional patent application to protect yourself. In jurisdictions like the United States and Canada, there is a 12-month grace period to file a patent application from the time of an initial public disclosure. You could file a patent application within 12 months of the first disclosure. This protects your patent rights. Hopefully, you've kept a good paper trail using your journal to further strengthen your case if there is a dispute as to ownership. Booby Traps So there is one final thing you can do to protect your invention or idea. You can include booby traps in the confidential information. So what do I mean by booby traps? A booby trap is something you insert into the information which has no function except to prove that you're the source of that information in the event the information is copied. A good example would be to put in some non-functioning code into a program or script. The existence of that code in an alleged copy of that program proves conclusively that the copy was stolen from you. Another example is to illustrate non-functional elements into the drawings that you use to describe your invention. Adding these elements to the confidential information could be a way of later showing that the confidential information came from you. Of course, you should detail these booby traps in your journal. Final thought. There is one last thing you should consider before you agree to reveal details of your information to anyone. If you're feeling uncomfortable about releasing those details and your gut tells you that it's not the right thing to do with that person, then just walk away. It's not unreasonable to be suspicious and most people will try to calm your suspicions down by providing you with more than just verbal assurances. If you're still suspicious despite their assurances, then there's a good chance your suspicions are accurate. Your gut instincts, while they're not foolproof, are often a good indicator that something just isn't right. So that's it in a nutshell. Hey, could you please do me a favor? I'm looking to help a lot more people with my videos. So if this video was informative or you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. Share it with someone who might also like it and subscribe to my channel. I'm working on several more videos on making and protecting your ideas, so activate that bell icon so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. As always, please comment if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to suggest any topics for future videos. Thanks for watching, everyone.